I'm Greg Mars and I'm the module leader for this module uh, and I'm also sharing the module with Dr Astrid Gunnerman and Pedro Abrantes. This is an outline of the course that you're going to be taking with us. So we're going to try and explain the overall approach to transport planning uh, and we start from the basics of deciding what is it that we want to get out of our transport planning system? So we consider the objectives of transport planning. These might be things like improving safety, improving the environment, or making the economy more efficient. And over the course of the weeks which follow from looking on from objectives, we're going to be considering a series of different things. I'll be taking you through uh, issues such as option generation, which is, well, if we know where we want to go, how do we decide what sorts of different transport policies we could try and implement? We'll also look at strategy development, which is how do you put together all the many different ideas that exist in the world about how to do transport planning? How do you put them together into a coherent package of different things that you could do that would help you to meet your objectives? Now, critically important to transport planning is an understanding of at least some basic economic principles. People respond to differences in journey times, to differences in prices. This is all uh, well understood so you need to know a little bit more about how that works and we're going to take you through some very basic uh, concepts such as how do we work out the demand for a, a train service for example. We'll also be teaching you about the <coughs> impacts of pricing on demand so if we decide to charge people more for, for using roads, how many more people will move over to using public transport and how many people will decide not to make the journey at all. These sorts of things are very sensitive politically but they're also critical to designing your strategy properly. Towards the end of the course we'll take you through the processes of appraisal which is assessing which is the best set of strategies or policies in front of you. And then finally bringing it together by um, looking at uh, monitoring. So how can we assess over the long term how these policies are working. Now the big blue box on the outside is about transport planning and policy in the whole and it's also got um, labelled in the, in the bottom corner there integration. So we're going to be through the course teaching you the basic building blocks but we're also, as we bring the, the course to a close and, and through some of the exercises that you'll do, we'll be making you think about how to integrate all of these things so that you can be confident that you can approach a transport planning problem and find the right solutions for it. OK, so um, I've introduced myself already, Greg Marsden. Um, you can see me, obviously, on the video now, but there's a picture of me up there. I'm in room 109 in ITS which is towards the lecture theatre side of the building. The main other teaching member of staff is Dr Astrid Gunnerman who's pictured there. She's in room 210, 210 which is on the same side of the building but on the second floor. And we'll also be joined by Pedro Abrantes for some of the discussion groups uh, and also for help with the uh, coursework exercise which I'll just mention briefly in a minute. So. Uh, you can find us in the ITS building, you can contact us by email and all of those details are in your student handbook uh, and obviously you can talk to us uh, around the lecture time. We don't bite. Listed here is the set of objectives um, that we've set out for the module as a whole. Uh, there's no point in me uh, sitting here and reading these out to you, you've got them there on the screen. Uh, you have them on, on the handouts um, so you can read them uh, at your own leisure but essentially what we're trying to give you is the confidence to look at a problem think about possible solutions put together the right package of solutions and decide which one would be the best and why um, and so you should have the confidence to be able to approach a transport planning problem whatever it is whether it's about um, inequities in the transport system or whether it's about um, a lack of finance or a congestion problem, you should be able to think about solutions. Now, as with all modules, um, we assess 
progress throughout the um, throughout the year, and this goes obviously to count towards your your final degree. Now, Tran 5041 is a 15 credit module, and we have two pieces of assessment. The first is a computer exercise, which will you'll be introduced uh, in a couple of weeks' time, um, and this is worth seven and a half credits, so half of the module. And essentially, what the the Pluto coursework is is an exercise for you to practice transport strategy development and assessment. It involves a computerised um, simulated city. You have to set a, a series of objectives, pick some policies uh, which you think will help to meet those objectives and then see how it works. Even if you're not confident with computing uh, facilities, it's relatively easy to get to know how to use the software. It's quite a fun exercise to do. Um, but obviously you've got the, um, the assessment bit that forms a part of that. And if you look back at the set of objectives that we had for the course on the previous slide, then the Pluto coursework is helping to assess how you're uh, progressing against the first five of those objectives. We also have an exam, which is um, again seven and a half credits, half of the module. And this is basically testing whether you're able to apply the knowledge that you've learned through the um, course. So we tend to set um, problems, practical problems for you to try and um, apply the principles that we've taught you and, and, and tell us what the solutions to those problems might be. But again, the exams aren't till January, it's not worth worrying about those now. We'll be taking you through um, different ways of answering exam questions through the discussion groups throughout the course of the, the module. So it's just to let you know if that's how you're going to, to be assessed over the, the module. Okay, now we've got various different um, sources of information for you about this module. Um, the first, which you've probably already heard about in your introductory week, is the, the virtual learning environment, or sometimes referred to as, uh, as Blackboard. This is essentially a website which you can link to from your um, portal homepage. Uh, all of your modules will, will be there. And on the virtual learning environment, I will post uh, announcements if I want to tell you about a particular um, exercise that we're going to be doing in class that I'd like you to do some reading for, or if there's a, uh, an interesting news item on transport policy which I think you ought to, to find out about and read about, then I'll post that there. I also upload all of the uh, lecture notes um, and the handouts from, from the lectures, so should you for any reason miss any of the lectures, then you're able to access the resources there. We sometimes post additional materials such as journal articles as well. It's also got information on how to contact myself uh, uh, and Astrid on there. So the virtual learning environment is uh, an excellent resource which you should use throughout um, the, the module uh, and if you're not sure about something then it's always worth checking on the virtual learning environment before you start running around trying to find people and ask just check whether whether the information has been posted there on the uh, virtual learning environment and paper copies of this have been given to you as well is the the module handbook for the module and in this um, we provide the description of all the um, the, the module details, what the objectives are, uh, what time we meet, where we're meeting, the um, so the timetable for the session, uh, details of the coursework, and uh, so this is where you'll find the complete description of what you need to do for the coursework, uh, and some more general reading. So again, it's worth checking in your module handbook, particularly around coursework submission time, that you've got the um, you've fulfilled all the things that you're supposed to do as part of that. So again, the module handbook and the virtual learning environment are there to help make sure that all the things that you really need to know are written down for you. But obviously there'll be things that you don't know, questions you want to ask about the lectures uh, as we go through. Myself and Astrid are here um, most of the time. You know, We are occasionally out of the office doing various research projects. Um, but do send us an email. You can try knocking on the door, but arrange an appointment to come and see us. Uh, and we're happy to spend time talking through uh, academic issues with you. OK, well, that's the end of the introductory lecture. I hope you enjoy transport planning and policy uh, as a module. I hope it provides the right building blocks for all the other things you're going to do here with us at the Institute for Transport Studies. 
and thank you for listening